Howdy folks, howdy, howdy. Sean Brock here with you once again with that old home sweet home. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. I always have to remind people that. I have to remind my own self to take out the trash. Set a reminder on my phone. Anyway, what we got here today is a 1942 D18. We're, we're down in my element. Man, we see some really good stuff come through here. This is no exception by any means. We're, we're down in my element here. That's all I know to say. This is for Dale Owen, Dale's Showstoppers on the Reverb. If you have interest in this guitar or any other uh, that you see me demoing on here that I've also tagged him in, then uh, please see the description box. You can call him, email him. You can uh, catch him on the Mandolin Cafe on Reverb. He has several vintage Martins right now, I know. Uh, along with several uh, luthier built guitars also some modern martins some authentics and the like and just a man an impossibly he's he's got a warehouse full of inventory that's big big stuff and i mean come on 1942 martin d18 We'll talk about the specs and all that, but let's run her around up and down and see what you think of her. This is this is my kind of box. This is my kind of box here. We'll start with our old bluegrass rhythm, okay? Listen to the top string, will you? Listen to this. Thank you, Mr. Computer. We're not playing it hard, okay? Check out the dynamic range, y'all. Listen to the balance of that chord. lost in that just real quick um you you can't replace age i've said it a hundred times on here i have no disrespect for torrified guitars you can't replace age period let's do a few more down here open Bill Monroe was here and said, yes, sir. If that don't let you fire you, then, then your woods went. Yes, sir.
I've been playing one three quarter necks all the time. Um, now my next mistake, I'll I'll have a different excuse for you. Okay. Let's take down the capo. What about it? I've got this old funny thing out here. I've left my Elliot laying over there. Yes. It's the key of S. I found it. Right here we go. A major. of a D18. I, uh, you know, to me, there is, there's nothing superior in personal opinion, I guess. I don't care if it's mine or somebody else's. Uh, but, you know, a D18 just records so good. The balance is so good. Listen to my thumbs pop, man. I'm, I'm getting too old for this business. B flat. <laughs> to talk about it if you've got ears and a brain and they're working together mine don't do that always so that's why I give that disclaimer you hear it for yourself I mean, you can also hear that I'm knocking the B string out play with dynamics this guitar will go with you the sound hole like that you hear how that color changes that's what you want in a guitar and I that's one of my points of contention with a torrified guitar versus an old guitar that's that the woods dried out and hardened up on its own key of C <laughs>
this. <laughs> this is the beauty of a well-made instrument. That's a that's the beauty. It's not something exclusive to a D18 or to a 28 or even the old versus new or torified versus natural. It's a well-made instrument. And it's a complex subject of uh, top thickness, arching, you know, what's the radius of the top, things like that. All these things that you guys sit around and study instead of playing the guitar. I know what you do. I know what you're doing at night. But anyway, so here's what I know about this guitar. Uh, you had some pictures come up. Adirondack, 1942 here. Um, so we're not dealing with a, a heavy guitar. Uh, in years to come, Martin kind of heavied things up a little bit uh, just because the consumer got stupid and started leaving guitar in the trunk of their car and stuff so uh, this is a little lighter than what you would go and buy off the shelf these days these are lighter lighter braced thinner braced uh, just sanded thinner adirondack top there of course your standard specs on your on your through saddle and your uh, pins those are waverly i believe uh, of course your your standard mahogany and you're gonna say this thing's shiny for 1942 this is a professional refinish I don't know who did it it wasn't me that's why it's professional um, but I do know that Dale has this listed as having a refinish uh, it has a ne had a neck set uh, they did a they did a really good bang up job on the neck set as part of that, they also had to plug some holes because, uh, you know, we've we've got a little bit uh, wild before my time, and I ain't done this, but, uh, you know, people start putting strap buttons uh, kind of in the inappropriate or abnormal places. Uh, the neck, of course, mahogany. Um, that uh, overlay there on the headstock I don't think that was refinished I think that's original um, it's had a neck set and a refret the neck this is not one of the skinnier 40s necks I've played there's a good there's a nice contour here uh, it's it's more C um, some of the some of the forties, kind of the first three or four frets seem like where they really got thin. This one seems a little fatter uh, on average, and then uh, it's got a nice nice taper to it. It's had to refret, uh, had the neck set. Whoever did all that did good on it. Uh, uh, it plays good. Um, it has had a replacement bridge. I remember it said that in the ad. And you'll want to check the ad. Um, sorry, my nose is itching. I don't have COVID. I don't think, well, COVID don't exist now. Never mind. Um, it's had a replacement bridge that is uh, made in the period correct style. They did a good job on that in my opinion, looking at it, kind of looking at how the taper is and the shape of it. Uh, they, whoever, Whoever's done the work on this knew what they were doing. Uh, it had a replacement bridge plate. And there's also, where is it? It's around here. There's a, there's a couple of cracks that have been cleated. I know there's, there's top crack over here south of the center seam. And there was a couple things on the back, I remember. And he's got that detailed uh, in, his, in his posting there on Reverb. And I'm sure he, he'd be more glad to tell you what he knows, too, if, uh, if need be, by email or something like that. Uh, my memory just ain't what it should be on all these things. I play them and, and hear how they sound, and I don't need to know nothing else. Um, 
and as stupid as it may sound at times, I think there's there's certain guitars that I've known of that sounded better after they were cracked <laughs> than before. And this this one right here is just a, it's a cannon. I mean, it's it's just a balanced. It's not the driest D18 that I've ever played, but it's it's still very dry. If we kind of check the check out the resonant frequencies of the body, you know, we got some decent action there. Especially on that treble E. But anyway, if you're interested in this guitar, don't let it pass you by. Don't sit on the discussion stage. Because I sat on the discussion stage for years on these. And uh, I wish I had gotten off my butt and acted. There goes my thumb again. On my, my desires. Because if nothing else, I would have made a bunch of money. Like Sally Struthers said, who wants to live better? We all do. Who wants to make more money or whatever? Anyway, uh, please subscribe, like, share, comment, and uh, check out the description box if you're interested in this very, very excellent 1942 Martin D18. Thank you so much.